first, briefly describe the character you play in the film and what ways, in what ways are you similar and different from the character that you play? I play Maria Vasquez. Okay. <laughs> She's the little sister of Bernardo Vasquez, who is the leader of the Sharks. And he's also a very, uh, he's like kind of famous in town for mm -hmm. his boxing. A great boxer. He's a great boxer. Um, and I, you know, I think Maria loves her family so much. She loves her roots, but she's also very um, interested in rooting herself to other things and other people and having different associations in her life. And she's just come to Nueva York for the first time. She's been there for four months. And she's there because Anita convinced Bernardo to go mm. and, to, and to let her come to Manhattan. Um, I think Maria and I are both very emotional. We lead with our hearts. First and foremost, we lead with love and we um, have a tough time uh, trying to understand why people hate differences so much mm. because she focuses on similarities more than differences. But the differences are not lost on her, which I think is uh, different from other iterations of Maria. Yes. The, Tony and Maria constantly have conversations about how they're different and how that's dangerous, but then they love each other anyways. I think that's a really beautiful thing, and I think that is uh, a core part of my personality. Um, and now, Ariana DeBoer. <laughs> I play Anita. She is the first lady of the Sharks, the girlfriend to Bernardo, mm -hmm. the leader of the Sharks. Um, she is a absolute firecracker with a passion for dancing and uh, she has a beautiful maternal relationship, sisterly relationship with Maria. Um, and she's sort of, I like to think of her as the glue amongst the family. Um, it's the complicated it's glue, but, mm -hmm. but she holds things together even in the face of incredible adversity, whether it's coming at her or the people that she loves. Um, but I, one of the things I love about this character is she has agency and she speaks her mind. She's a woman ahead of her time mm. and she has beautiful ambitions, ambitions to create a better life for herself and the people that she loves. And she has no qualms about going 100% towards fighting for her version of the American dream. Um, and then, you know, as time goes on, you see how the very dream that she is fighting for is ripped from her hands uh, by Americans. Isn't that wild? Mm. It is a wild, wild thing. Um, and I think that our, m my ambition and Anita's ambition is where we are the most similar. Mm. I've never been afraid to fight for my dreams or speak my mind. <laughs> uh, but And we both have a passion for dancing and we, we believe in joy. I believe in joy and love above all things. And those are things that inherently make a great Anita. Uh, how familiar were you with the stage play and the earlier film prior to being cast? I watched the movie for the first time when I was six or seven years old mm -hmm. and I was hooked. And yeah. I had the the CDs and the records the and the CDs. the Arthur the cassette. I had yeah, I did yeah for sure. Um, it was a you know it was a, an integral part of my upbringing. It was it was Rita Moreno was the first you know woman I saw on screen who looked like me yeah. and who represented me, and uh, I, I was so enraptured by her performance and. Mm -hmm. And by her as a person, she was a pioneer. We wouldn't be sitting here today without her mm -hmm. and her leadership and her her guidance. And um, and then I played the the role on stage when I was sixteen years old. So I became very familiar with the source material on the musical side as well. Um, for myself, I was I was familiar with the Robbins choreography because mm -hmm. you know I'm a dancer first, or I used to say that about myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I I fell in love with the the 61 film when I was a kid, you know, sitting crisscross applesauce in my grandmother's floor, just glued to the television, watching the woman in the purple dance, just exude joy. Hmm. Um, and, and then I came to know her as Rita Moreno, and she was the closest thing that I could find at the time to, to a, a role model or a woman who I thought looked like me. Mm -hmm. Was the experience of being directed by Steven Spielberg anything like what you imagined it would be? And what, if anything, surprised you about it? No, <laughs> it wasn't what I thought it would be. Because, you know, yeah. I, think, I think we have this idea of him in our minds because his name is on so much. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't go watch anything without Steven being attached. Animaniac, Shrek, yeah. like everything he's, you know, he's, he has a hand in everything. But um, like I said, the most intimidating thing about him is his name. 
-hmm. And the second you meet him, he's a human, he's generous, and he loves what he does for a living. And he also uh, cares a lot. He cared a lot about West Side Story. I didn't realize yeah. what a huge musical buff he was. That was mm -hmm. surprising to me. He's like a little fangirl. He is a fangirl. And he goes <laughs> he goes to see all of the shows on Broadway. He go, He loves to go backstage and talk to the cast. Yes, yeah. I you, first met him at Hamilton. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, thank you for coming to our little skit. And he was like, our little skit. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. And he had such a big smile on his face. Mm. Yeah, he, I love he him. loves it. I mean, and, and that's really important when you're... When you're so deep in how much you care about something, like in the way that I care about West Side Story, the way that we yeah. care about West Side Story, and to meet your match in that way creatively, someone mm -hmm. who cares just as much, if not more, about the source material and doing it justice, yeah. it's a really beautiful thing. And, yeah. and Steven's just, he's the best. He's so beautifully collaborative, and mm -hmm. I think that is what people don't realize, or perhaps he has grown to be more collaborative as, you know, as you know, the, his longevity in this industry uh, lasts. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, fascinating, because I, I think I was expecting a director to say, you should do it like this, and you should do it like this, and then you should move here, and da 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 by the numbers. And instead he said, how about you just go run wild? Yeah. And I said, that sounds great Which, unless me. it was like a technical thing or a Janusz thing, yeah. it was very much like... Let's do it and see where we go. Yeah, and see then, what happens. And then we'll, we'll fine tune. This is great. Yeah. Wouldn't do it again. He's great. <laughs> Call us. <laughs> We're down. All right. What do you think makes this film relevant for today's audiences? It's this mm, yeah. timeless for a reason. Mm. You know, it's lived for 64 years for a reason. No yeah. one has forgotten the music or the plot for 64 right. years for a well, reason. Well, and it speaks to lessons that we continually do not learn as a society. Yeah, history is doomed to repeat itself. That's what the story's really about. It's like, yeah. it's one of those things where you can tell it's going to be on loop. That story mm -hmm. is going to be on loop because in our iteration, at least, Tony talks about how he went to prison for almost beating a kid to mm -hmm. death. And that's exactly what goes on in our film. It's just going to keep happening yeah. until they finally have a conversation and they finally meet halfway. And there's a little glimmer of hope at the yeah. end when the sharks help to carry Tony's body with the jets into Doc's drugstore and they mourn together because they're and honestly they're really they're really there for Maria yeah. in my opinion right. because she loses her mind in front of them. But it's one of those things where I think it's going to be a conversation starter and hopefully not yeah. a conversation ender and we can... No, this is, this film is the beginning of a conversation. In yeah. fact, it's like a reigniting of a conversation Indeed. that had been started or restarted with the 61 film. And it's been going on. It's, it's been going just on. not great. But I think <laughs> this film takes on so many large large issues head on. Mm. It's, it's a film that is courageous and brave in many, many ways. Um, and like I said, it's the beginning of a conversation. It will not be the end. Yeah, for sure. What would you say your biggest challenge was in making this film? I would say my biggest challenge in making this film was not letting someone else's Academy Award stress me out. Yeah, that's yeah. real. <laughs> that, no, I mean, like, that's real. And I always thought about that when I got to work with you. It was just like, oh, she's a force. Because it's, mm. it's, a, it's a big feat. It's a huge task. And, and you took it on so beautifully. Well, and um, all of these characters have such a legacy, you know. They do. The, the, both the, the original production is, is beloved mm -hmm. and, and the 61 film is beloved. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean there's not space for new interpretations and, and two, two we or three were, things have to be able to exist at one time. Yes. And um, and we were encouraged by Tony Kushner. Tony Kushner took on a huge feat himself and yeah. you know Arthur Lawrence's script is one of the most iconic scripts in musical yeah. theater history and Justin Tony Kushner Peck. was like no. <laughs> he was, he was like, like why don't we try this he was instead. Like, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. And in the same breath Justin Peck Justin. took on the, the Robbins choreography the, the that legacy there. Yeah. Um, I will never forget I ran into Jessica Lang at at Casual. some premiere and she was like, "Well, tell me about the choreography because you know, I was very good friends with Jerry Jerry Robbins." Jerry and I said, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> well, dot, uh, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> um, but it is beloved. But, I, you know, it is a Herculean feat to 
pay homage to something and then also go and recreate your, or not recreate, but create your own language and honor the bodies and, and, and the, the time that you're in now, yeah. right? It has to be allowed to inform a, the period piece. And Stephen allowed us to do that as well as an admirer of the Robert Wise 1961 film. He has so yeah. much respect for that film and it will always be an iconic piece of film history. Right. It's a product of its time though and it was time for something new. Mm -hmm. And now we reintroduce that to the next generation in hopes that they, in their 64 years, We'll make it again and do something wonderful with it. I'm sure it'll happen. And, and I hope they do. And we're part of that legacy. Yeah. And that's, that's an honor, truly.